A very good evening and a warm welcome, my dear sisters and brothers, to this graced moment of time for us to sit back, to reflect, to ponder, but most importantly to find some moments to recollect on the question that we are about to enter into, the Eucharist, the gift of the Eucharist in a post-pandemic church. We are all stepping out from a from a devastation, we are all emerging from a period of isolation, of emptiness, of abandonment. There were quite a bit that we had to face during this period, this time of this pandemic, which has somehow affected many of us in our lives, in our spiritual walk, but most importantly in our relationship with God in a given space known as the church. As we step into this new era, as we call it, as we return back to this moment of the church today, we are beginning to ask ourselves, how do we face this new challenge? How do we adapt ourselves to how do we return back to a time when the church is slowly but gradually opening its doors to the whole experience of the Eucharist. Let's begin by taking this, just this part of the reflection to understand the gift of the Eucharist in our lives. We return back to the whole experience of Holy Thursday, the Last Supper, when the Lord instituted the gift of the Eucharist and He, he invited the Apostles and do this in memory of me. You remember the beautiful story of the road to Amos when the disciples were broken, they were lost and they were just stepping out from a crisis just as we are going through that moment when everything seemed to be meaningless and lost they found themselves running away finding a safe, secure a moment where they could just be by themselves and in the midst of this confusion, this chaos and this crisis the Lord appeared to them and as He stepped into their life at that given moment, even if they did not recognize Him he began to enter into that moment of their crisis, into that moment of their loss. And all he could say was, what are you talking about? What is it that you are discussing on your way? It's a question that we could ask ourselves at this point, as the doors of the church are beginning to open up, as the doors of the church are beginning to invite us to step back into this given space, Somewhere at the depths of our life, there is always that fear, the insecure moments when we find ourselves, is it safe? Is this the time? Is it good? And that is the moment we begin to see the Lord asking us to step into that fear moment of what is happening at the depths of our heart. And the most important thing was the Lord unveiled and revealed Himself through the Word. As we speak about the Eucharist, the Word of God is always the revelation of who God is in our lives. And in that whole moment of that encounter with the Word of God, they began to listen and to listen and to listen attentively to that Word of God. And God was speaking to them. God was revealing to them. And they were able to capture that Word of God. Although they were sinking and absorbing, that word of God, they were still struggling with the whole understanding of what it is to be fed upon. And when evening drew near, the Lord says, I'm about to leave you. And yet their hearts were troubled, still troubled. And they says, Lord, would you like to spend the evening with us and have a meal with us? And as he entered into their homes that evening, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it. And at once their eyes were opened. And they recognized the Lord. It is the Lord. And the Lord was no longer with them. Memories of the Eucharist was brought back into that picture. And they began to realize, wasn't our hearts burning with fire when He spoke to us on the road, when He broke bread? At once, they got back and they ran to tell the others of that encounter, of that experience, but most importantly about that mission 
of bringing the good news to others. That's the Eucharist that they had just experienced on that road to Emmaus. When we begin to look at this whole experience of what the church teaches us, the church tells us that the Eucharist in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Numbers 1324 to 1327, that the Eucharist is the source and the summit of our Christian life. It's a moment when we begin to ask ourselves the source, the summit, the beginning, the end, the departure, the arrival. Everything that culminates in our life is encircled in the center of the Eucharist. And when we begin to look at this Eucharist, we may ask this simple but crucial question, why? Why do we need to attend the mask? Why do we need to step into this given space and platform, which is basically a community celebration of the Eucharist? Many of us during this time of the pandemic, we have found ourselves sitting on the couch of our homes, sitting before the screens of our televisions, of our computers, and engaging ourselves in that spiritual communion with the Lord. But now we are invited to step out from that couch to the pew, to return back to the pew and to find ourselves at the home of the Lord, which is a base for the community celebration of the Eucharist. When we step into this whole experience of the Eucharist, then we will know what this whole experience of the source and the summit is of our life. It is a sign and it is a very strong sign that tells us who God is in our life. When Jesus instituted that Eucharist, he invited the disciples, do this in memory of me. The question is, do I hunger? Do I thirst for the Eucharist? Do I long to be with the Lord? We'll take a moment this moment just to be in a moment of silence and maybe us ask ourselves, why? Why do I find myself at the home of the Eucharist? Why do I find myself at the center of the Eucharist? What is it that longs in my heart for the Eucharist? The psalmist would say, O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze onto you in your sanctuary. How often do we find ourselves sitting before the Lord in silent adoration at this moment of our time. How often do we find ourselves in that given moment of just being alone with the Lord, just in that moment to find that connection, to find that moment with the Lord. This pandemic has brought a whole sense of disconnection with the sacraments. And yet we are now finding ourselves just like Noah had found himself after the flood, to return to the Lord, to find himself with the Lord. And this is a given moment that we need to sit and ask ourselves, am I really finding myself to be connected with the Lord? Am I in tune? Am I with the Lord? Stay with us, Lord, for evening is drawing near. Stay with us, Lord, for evening is drawing near. So it's good important for us at this moment as we are entering this day of recollection to understand the Eucharist in this post-pandemic time. It's good for us just to find ourselves that sometimes we may be looking for the many external manifestations of that science, but do we find this in that moment of our life, of that connected moments with God? As I said, it's a moment when you can just sit before the Eucharist, sit before the Blessed Sacrament, Another area that we could speak about in this moment of the post-pandemic is, is an area which, that we have been very accustomed at home with, which we call it spiritual communion. Very often during this given time of the pandemic, many of us were entering into what is called a spiritual communion. It was a beautiful moment. It was a moment just to, to linger in stillness and silence, just to enter into the depths of God's presence in that silent communion. Sometimes in the midst of our busyness, as Martha would be, Mary found that moment to enter into that spiritual communion, just to sit by the Lord, to linger, to savor, to sense the very presence of God. There is only one thing that was essential at that moment, and Mary captured it in that spiritual communion. With the doors being open, 
maybe it's time for us to enter into a more intimate spiritual communion and that is to embrace and to enter into that communion with God by receiving the Eucharist. It's a time for us to embody the very flesh of Christ in the Eucharist, in the sacrament in our lives. I, I return to what I've just been saying, that as we long for that Eucharist, we long to partake of that meal. We long to embrace that meal. We long to sit at table with the Lord. We long to eat the body and drink the blood of Christ. This communion is no longer just on the level of a spiritual, but it's an enfleshed communion. Where we partake of that communion, we become one in that communion. We become in flesh. The word met flesh and dwelt among us. So it's a question when we ask ourselves, I have moved from the spiritual communion to a whole experience of entering into the body and the blood of Christ. Today, when we speak about this communion, in many parts of the world, it's known as the Eucharistic revival. Churches are beginning to invite the young and the old to enter into this revival. The adoration, the sacraments, the Eucharist, to be part of the Eucharist. But most importantly, it's to be part of a community because my relationship with God is no longer just the Eucharist. It's the church. It's the community. And when I partake of this Eucharist, I become one with the community. It's a question now we ask ourselves, do I long to be with the community? Because the danger with our spirituality is that we can become very indifferent. We become so isolated in the time of the pandemic that we forget one another and what it is to have a sense of belonging. Maybe the pandemic has taken us into understanding of what it is to appreciate the gift of brotherhood and sisterhood, the gift of the church as one, the gift of community as one. We could take a moment to ask ourselves, am I ready to have that that relationship of binding myself in the bond of brotherhood and sisterhood in the community. Because it's a celebration of community, it's a celebration of the church. It's no longer about me and alone. And that is the church. You are the church and I am the church and we are the church. The early Christians in Acts 342 would meet in the early moments to share everything in common, to be one in the table of the Lord. Do I experience that in our community gatherings? Do I find myself still in isolation, sitting away and standing away from that community? The invitation today is for us to look at ourselves. I find myself looking at these beautiful words of the document of the church. It is the Eucharist, the celebration of the Mass, that makes the church, and it is the church, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which makes the Eucharist. The Holy Spirit of the Mass is the life blood. It requires our active participation to be celebrated in our physical presence. We need to be present physically to partake of the Eucharist and to be one with the community. We take a moment at the second level to ask ourselves, besides my hunger, my thirst of this Eucharist, do I find myself hunger and thirst for the community? Do I want to have the sense of belonging to the community? It is that feeling that one has to recognize the newness that is taking place in my life. We ask ourselves when we are ready to step into the house of the Lord. As we spend ourselves looking at the Eucharist today in the post-pandemic times and this great Eucharistic revival that is taking part in our life, in the many parts of the world, you find people who are beginning to open. The doors of the church are beginning to open and people are finding its ways back. Finding its ways back. It is all about the enrichment, the enrichment of our relationship with God. Because the Eucharist is God with us. The Eucharist is God enfleshed, embodied in our very presence. To touch, to feel, to see, to sense the very being of God. And that is about a relationship. To listen to the word of God, to dwell into the presence of God. But it all takes us back to the moment when I am ready to walk back to the Lord and say, I want to enrich my relationship with you. 
and I am ready to step back. And the second and the most beautiful thing as we enrich our relationship with God is to, to find this food of nourishment for our mission, for our evangelization work. Because the Eucharist is bread for the food of the journey. It enriches us every moment of our lives as we step out of this comfort zone, as we step out of this isolated life of living an individualistic lifestyle to a communal lifestyle and to reach out and to share, to spread the gospel to one another and to live one another. As we spend some time this moment in this moment of time of silence, we need to ask ourselves the most important question, where is the Eucharist in my life? The source, the summit of my life, the center of my being, my life, my Eucharist. Let us ask the Lord if I'm ready to, to enter into this whole experience. Just as Mary who took this beautiful journey of our life, when she took upon herself as the ark, the womb, the tabernacle, and she brought this to the whole experience of Elizabeth who leapt with joy at the baby John. For the greetings reach you, the child leapt for joy. Can we be the one who is the vessel, the instrument of the good news? Let us spend ourselves in this moment to reflect upon the Eucharist in our lives in this most precious moment, the post-pandemic time. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in this moment of reflection and allow the Lord to touch the very depths of our heart, to hunger, to thirst for the gift of the Eucharist. God bless you.